Hi, I'm Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to this series on the Cisco Unify wireless networking solution. In this video, I'd like to show you how to use Network EAP and Open with EAP to create a wireless link between two access points with strong authentication and encryption. I will take uh, in this video as an example the Workgroup Bridge, which is a gateway uh, for devices that don't have a wireless connection themselves. Uh, but you could apply the same configuration with any access point to access point, Cisco access point to access, Cisco access point wireless link, uh, that is to say a repeater or a bridge. This video is set in three parts. In the first part, we'll look at what Network EAP allows you to do and what its limitations are. In the second video, we'll be looking at Open with EAP and see how more you can do with that. And in the third video, I will show you the difference between the uh, Cisco access points and the non-Cisco uh, wireless clients for these two modes. So in this setup here, I have two access points. The first one is um, what I call main access point, and the second one is what I call the worker bridge. I'm going to go to the first access point and configure it first. As this is going to be a .1x based authentication, the first thing I want to set is to set on the access point which radius server I want to use. In this particular case, I'm going to use the access point itself as uh, its own radius server. So I'm going to go to server manager, and I'm going to configure this side of the access point, which is the uh, client side, so to speak, to tell that if you want to authenticate with .1x any client, you will have to use that radius server, which is in fact the access point IP address itself. I define a shared secret. As good practice, always define the default ports, 1812 and 1813. And off you go. So this access point should use that uh, radio server when authenticating clients with .1x. Uh, good practice also dictates that just below that screen, you define the default server priority. So there is something as a default if the SSID itself doesn't override the default. That's the first side. Then I'm going to go on the same access point to the other side, its radius server side, and tell the access point that a radius client is going to come so local radius server and this radius client is going to ask for authentication items and as this radius client is going to be the access point again itself uh, so the client NAS as we call it is going to be the access point IP address once again so it looks like it's the same configuration but in fact you're configuring two sides of your access point one radius side uh, as a client and one radius side as a server as I am in the um, radius server side of things, I'm going also to define a user, for example, Cisco Cisco. <laughs> okay, this access point is ready to authenticate devices. Next, I'm going to create an SSID for this access point. Um, I'm going to decide that it's going to be on 802.11bg radio, and I can use as an encryption mechanism um, for example, AESCCMP, which is WPA2, AESCCMP here. So I'm going to encrypt using that process on radio 0, which is BG. And the next step is to create the SSID itself. So I go to SSID Manager and create a new SSID that I can call my SSID. It's going to be on radio G. And as far as the authentication mechanism goes, I'm going to only allow for now network EAP so you can see what it does. I'm going to use the default EAP servers, which are um, defined as being the exponent itself. And in that same page, I'm going to allow encryption by setting WPA to mandatory. Um, I could leave it WPA here because I'm already saying WPA2 by saying a ESCMP, so it's going to be the default, but just to force only V2, I'm going to go power the book and say V2 here. Apply. And you see the message saying network EAP is used for leap authentication only. That's something I wanted you to see because if you look at Cisco documentation, it's to say the least maybe a little bit misleading. They say in many places that network EAP is for Cisco clients regardless of the EAP mode. Well, that's not true. <laughs> uh, as they say here, network EAP is for leap. It's not for Cisco clients. Uh, it might have been true, you know, five or six years ago when there was only uh, leap and web, but now that we have many other EAP types, uh, network EAP means leap and leap only. So okay, we're aware that uh, network EAP is leap. Fine. I'm going also to broadcast this SSID. 
So at the bottom of the same page, I'm going to go to single SSID mode. So I'm going to broadcast only one SSID. Uh, guest mode means broadcast, basically. And that's the, uh, access, the SSID I'm going to broadcast. All right. So this access point is almost ready. One last item I wanted to show you as we go through this authentication mechanism network heap is that when we configured the reduce side of this access point, we allowed both network heap and open with heap, that is to say, um, uh, heap fast in that case. So if you go back to radio server and general setup, you can see here that the access point is going to authenticate as a radio server both heap fast and leap. Okay, so this AP is almost ready. The only thing I need to do now is to set up the radio. <laughs> if the radio is disabled, the access point is not going to broadcast anything, so I just need to go on and turn the radio on. So this access point is going to be an access point, so I can keep its role to set to access points. I just need to check enable. And one other thing I like to do is to set the channel manually, otherwise it has this ugly feature by which it randomly chooses a channel without you controlling it. So I'm going to put this access point in channel 1 instead of con using this uh, least congested frequency uh, nightmare feature. Okay, so this access point is ready and it should be um, accepting clients from now on. You can always uh, double check, verify that the uh, radio is up. If the radio doesn't come up, there is a problem with your configuration. But if the radio comes up, it's a good sign that probably something is OK in your configuration. So that's the uh, main access point. I'm going to repeat the same configuration on the other access point, which is going to be a workgroup bridge, uh, with a few variations. This workgroup bridge being a client, it's not going to uh, care about the radio server thing, because that's the access point's job, not the client's job. So you're not going to go through here server manager and local radio server things. It's a client, so it doesn't know these things. So you can skip these steps and go directly to the encryption manager section, uh, where of course you need to uh, set the CMP exactly as you did on the other access point so that they match. And of course define the SSID exactly the same way. So it has to have the same name and have the same specifications, of course. So its name was my SSID on BG Radio. You need to set up the um, authentication mechanism somehow here as well, because as a client, you're going to request one authentication mechanism or another. So I'm saying network heap here as well. I don't define any radio server because the client doesn't have a clue about which radio server you're going to use. And I've set the uh, encryption to .pa exactly as it was before. Apply. Same message back network heap. And I just need to set the radio on and the access point would start to uh, try to associate. But as we're using an heap method, which is um, leap in that case, the access point as a client needs to send a username and password. So there are two places where you can define this username and password. With leap, that is to say network heap, there is a legacy method which is working fine, uh, which is right here, network, uh, heap client optional. Here you can define a username and password. Um, so that's again on, on the client, right? So I probably need to check the SSID first if I want to define it here. So that Cisco Cisco is what this access point is going to send as a username and password. Um, as soon as you click OK, uh, the system tells you that this is a legacy and that there is a new mode uh, that we'll check in the second video. But with network heap, this legacy mode is still working. So with leap, that mode is working. Same message about leap and OK. So I can now go to my uh, radio on this access point, try to turn it on, and see if by any chance I would be associating to the other access point. I'm going to monitor at the same time the uh, CLI of this access point because uh, that's where you will see if it associates properly and you will see what mode it uses. Um, that's not something you'll see very clearly on the uh, main access point. You will see that someone comes up with a WPA2, but you will not see um, if it's using leap as a sub method or something else. That's something you can see only on the client. So this AP is going to be a repeat a work bridge. I said enable. As soon as I do that, if I monitor my main access point, I see my radio is up, and I see you see that someone associated station workgroup bridge associated to, to to parents, and it just says key management LPA2. Whereas if you look at the uh, workgroup bridge itself, you see a bit more. You see LPA2, but also leap. So this is more useful. Okay, so it's working fine.